Hey, um, yeah, I just thought I could um, chat about this um, topic. Um, I just really feel like engaging in conversation lately um, in kind of like an honest way and kind of like without judgment sort of way. Uh, I don't get that all the time. I, uh, you know, some people just aren't open for those like conversations. Um, or like the, the person that I tend to talk about with the, with these sort of um, subjects, like in my classes, um, you know, he's a pretty good listener, but he doesn't know the, the, this, these type of subjects. So it's kind of makes me feel as if I'm not having a real conversation um, about, about this. Um, so the topic I wanted to bring up was, uh, it, it's kind of like women's sexuality and there's this guy um, on my Facebook who I friended, befriended, and um, I don't know why they don't call it like befriend. They just say like, friend. Um, his name's like David um, Duba. Uh, maybe that's wrong, David. Anyway, he had he has some really um, deep conversations and like just from his, his own kind of a uh, mini article on there was talking about, yeah, if no, he starts the, the whole conversation by just saying, um, like cheers to women who like, who love to fuck just like that. And, um, so some some people that like knew him or like know what his goals are, like understood why he said that and like understood the rest of his article. Um, but for others, you know, that's like a really triggering thing, and it's like it almost sounds similar to what uh, males generally have for their thinking. Um, is to be the, the ones and he explains this is like to be the ones who are like trying to bring the sexuality out of women um and the women playing the part of i'm not really interested and uh you know i'm i'm a good girl and uh this sort of thing you know it's been and that's just that's i i believe um I'm just going right into it, how I feel about it is like that. That's, that's an, that's a real system that we have going on a real, um, perpetuated problem regarding, um, gender, um, you know, and how males see females. I mean, I'm sure it still exists in like same sex, um, relationships too, but yeah, it's just really interesting. And, uh, you know, plenty of people had stuff to say. Some were just like, uh, and it's been a few days since I looked at this, but some were kind of like grateful and understanding and like kind of drove some of his points um, forward more um, of why that would be good, you know, to be acknowledging that and praising women who can stand in their sexuality. Then others, um, one woman was like a really like a perfect example, like um, to like kind of combat that idea, um, you know, go against it was just um, that she, well, she claimed that, you know, like she tried that and was like really trying to like own her sexuality and that people actually like men walked over her and like didn't respect her for it. Um, and there's, there's more to like what she says there, but, um, 
yeah, it's just it's just interesting like how we can all be experiencing a really similar um well, we're all experiencing the same things basically um in one form or another you know we we're all in the same world we're we're all we've all got the same kind of recipe around us and how the thinking for from person to person is um so much different you know um and I just, I really do like when someone can, and especially like on the, on these big issues and like gender issues have been like really big, um, with this, with our president, new president, um, with Trump and I don't know how long they've been surfacing, but it seems like it's been so strong, um, lately, like more than I've heard about. You know, this stuff wasn't like coming through the news to my knowledge. Um, but again, I actually don't never have watched the news. Um, I'm just starting to get interested in NPR, which uh, is always really interesting when um, my housemate has it on in the kitchen. Anyway, I'll I'll come back. So, um, yeah, I, so I spoke with my friend about this and... Yeah, somehow I'm like having a conversation. He's asking me questions, but at the same time, I'm like kind of after the fact, like, uh, oh, I never really got like his side of the story or like, you know, um, I think he just has to like dive more into it. Just like plenty of other folks out there who have just been like, oh, like that's not something I talk about or, you know, which is, uh. I'm smi- and I'm kind of smiling about it because it's so awesome. You know, that's, um, it's cool to see people who are maybe kind of on the fence of like, oh, that exists, um, you know, or that's actually a conversation to have, you know, um, and like trying to improve um, the relationships between men and women or, or just like ourselves and our um our own ways of um, navigating our relationships and communicating and like allowing, um, you know, just like the full, the full thing. It's just, it's just really powerful to like get into um, changing these. Oh, seems to have frozen a little bit. Changing these ideas and uh, hard rules that we've set for um, ourselves and others. So, yeah, I yeah, I think I'll what I'll do is I'll just put a link there. I, um, hopefully his profile's not private. Um, and if anything, I'll just like allow him to ask if I can just use that for for here, and just have a little have it down in the description. Um, what else? What else was I thinking about chatting about? I should have made like a list or something more organized. Um, yeah, and I had this midterm in a women's studies class. Um, and I'll be honest, like it's a really easy class. Um, well, till now. Now we have this midterm and it's basically, you know, like review everything we've been touching on, um, which you've never reviewed before. And we like rarely review, we're like never review in class, you know, like maybe just like a couple terms from like last class, which was three hours long. Um, so it's like a lot to just like go back and look at your notes, go like read through bunch of different readings but it's, it's also not like i'm just gonna be honest like it's it's really not that bad i got hmm. how many questions like nine different little questions maybe one's more important than the others which is about like hitting up a um you probably can't read that it might be backwards the um, OSL. 
um, outcomes and assessment of learning outcomes. That's like what most classes have like in their syllabus, I think, is like, oh, you will be learning about these points, these points, you know, just like as a, a guide to what you're supposed to be taking in. So it's actually kind of cool. It was like she's making our question relate to the actual goal of the class. It's pretty cool. Um, so that kind of having this midterm and just starting to get into it on my first question um, brought that up too. I was just thinking more about, and there's this huge article like about um, like the male gaze and um, women in cinema. Uh, this, this article is, uh, uh, these are all pretty interesting. If, if you guys, um, like this kind of thing, Laura Mulvey's visual pleasure and narrative cinema. Um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty big one. Like everything she puts in there, it's, it's a it's pretty dense. Um, supposedly, um, these type of e-reader or uh, I forget what they call these little books. They're usually like that. They're like um, kind of like these research papers that are just someone told me that they're just supposed to try to make them as long as possible and um, making them really uh, like word heavy. You know, it's almost like they're saying this thing, but they're taking like a whole paragraph to like get this point across and just like layer words like, Oh, fancy word, fancy word. It's like, it's a little much, but if you slow down and just kind of go over each thing, it's like, okay, I get, I, I wish I could give you an example. Like here's one thing I thought was important. Uh, during its history, the cinema seems to have evolved a particular illusion of reality in which this contradiction between libido and ego has found a beautifully complementary fantasy world. Um, in reality, the fantasy world of the screen is subject to the law which produces it more so that that beginning part um eh, that wasn't too complex with it oh my gosh there's a nice sunset okay I should try to find that sunset up there I just cleaned my window but it's a little streaky hmm Hopefully you can see that. Um, what other topics would I want to talk about? Hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, so a lot of this relates to my life, I think. And, uh, I want to relate this to dance because I've been trying to probably too much think my way through dance and how to come back and get sort of comfortable in my dance. Um, I had done contact improv for, oh, I think it was about a year, maybe a little more than a year. Um, and just sort of casually, like maybe once a week, uh, at the Heights, you know, this is in Seattle, Washington. This, I did this probably like five years ago. Um, you know, started learning and, um, yeah, I got really like swept away in it. It's, it's, um, it's been a source of like inspiration for my life really um and so i'm coming back to it it's been a while since i was consistent and feeling comfortable 
So, um, you know, these questions about gender, attraction, sexuality, or um, or just to be more specific, my relationship to people um, and w women just comes up a lot more. And I even thought, um, as I was at this festival a few weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, um, that I was kind of ashamed to be a male um, and attracted to people or to women. Um, so I found myself avoiding girls. Um, yeah, <laughs> there was this one moment I was at the soul play, um, kind of like a retreat almost. Um, it's an, it's an amazing place. Like people are working on just like, uh, self-development or like self-love and it's, um, there's plenty of workshops. I think that first thing is the biggest part of soul play is like the self-love hence the mini workshops. Um, and then music comes into like a, a sec uh, for sure. Like second notch down is like, Oh, look, focus on some music and, you know, dance and uh, dance might actually take, take number two. Um, Cause they have more dance workshops than, you know, just like music based workshops. So um but you know they go hand in hand a bit, um, but yeah, it's a, this this event Soul Play takes place in Pinecrest, California. Um, focuses on self love, and um, yeah, just like that that reflection, and sometimes it's just you get really like heady, and even though I keep I've told people, even though you're around like a lot of loving people and you feel like you're in a great place you can still feel lonely. Like sometimes you still like can't connect the way you want to or um, get through to people. Um, and you might just find yourself <laughs> like I, like I did uh, still feeling uh yeah, lonely, distance, uh, distance from people. Uh, but anyway, uh, there was this one time, uh, and I was in like a lot of self reflection. It's very almost like meditative to be there, and the the workshops are very much like meditative and self reflective, and you know you're working on communication and like listening to your your heart and like your breath and what feels good and what doesn't feel good. Um, so I already had the suspicion that I was like avoiding women. Uh, I don't know how, how I knew that exactly. But I think just the thought was like, Oh, I just, I don't want to look at girls really. It's like, I just feel guilty. And it's partly like this article. It's not a bad thing. It's just that, I'm sensitive and I, I've taken it lately, all this women's study stuff to be very uh, serious and kind of, uh, maybe it's a good thing, you know, it kind of like damages my ego, which who needs it, right? Um, so when I really noticed my avoidance for women, approaching women coming up, I was dancing, I hadn't danced um, the first night, this was like the second night or actually, yeah, who, who cares? But I'm, it's a, it's a lovely dance. This guy, I know the DJ, he was real cool. I helped him kind of tried to help him set up things a little bit. Um, I was going to be in charge of the lights, um, which didn't end up working out because their light thing, like just crashed. I swear it wasn't my fault. Um, yeah, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and this was before it all like 
started. So that just freaked me out. And I'm just like, I want this event to go well. And uh, the lights are crashing. We didn't know how to like turn them back on. And like the whole place is like pitch black. It's like nine o'clock, you know, and there's people hanging out, like just hanging out in the, um, this like kind of chill beanbag sleepy area. Um, and everyone's just kind of being mellow. There's no lights. Um, I'm diverting. Um, but so I was feeling good, you know, the DJ is cool. I'm just kind of connecting with his music. Uh, and I'm no, I'm not really a pro at all. Like it's been a long time since I was like really connecting with others doing this contact improvisation dance or even a static dance stuff. I haven't done it in the static dance in a few years. I was doing that a few years ago in, in Hawaii. Um, just on and off. But I was, you know, I've, I was dancing around and I just started to notice this girl like kind of come into my field a little bit. You might like feel it too. Sometimes you can't be sure, right? Um... She's wearing white, and I just thought, oh, it's just because she's wearing white. It's just it's very like noticeable. Like, and it's like, okay, no big deal. She's not trying to dance with you. Just chill. Like, just dance your dance, right? And so, but what ended up happening is I felt that a couple times. I was like, oh, she's kind of in my area, uh, you know. And it's not. I didn't know what to do with that. Even like. <sighs> It's, I've, I've had a hard time and I've, I've known this balancing a static dance with contact improv, um, you know, or just, right. Just like getting in touch with somebody or I guess you might, and you might not want to look stupid, right. You don't want to just like kind of stop your dance, start like dancing with somebody and it to be, uh, like, Oh, what they didn't even want to, or so. I think I slowly started dancing her way. And when I, well, what happened was it was like the third time and it clicked. And I was just like, there is no denying this. This girl is coming for me. And I think I like looked around. I saw her friend. She had like a friend with her. And then like her friend like smiled and was just, you know, like you just, you start to understand things, even though it's, it's quiet. You're like, Oh, Friends smiling about this thing I'm questioning. And, um, oh, and she smiled. And I was like, okay, so I think she wants to dance with me. Um, and you can't say anything. It's, like, loud and stuff. So, yeah, just noticing my whole resistance through this process. And, uh... You know, like, she was pretty or whatever. Like, I felt fine with her. It's, it's not like I, I was, like, turned off by her. I just, like, didn't want to engage. And I was just trying to be, like, you know, I was kind of, like, felt like felt something. Like, oh, yeah, there's something there. But it's, like, but I don't want to go out on this limb or be, like, the guy who, like, has to dance with you, you know? Like, it's just hard. I'm in this spot, you know? It's, like. And they don't, maybe they don't even think that I'm in this, this spot. They just think, oh, like normal guy, like what's going on? He's, why won't you dance with me? Right. Who knows? Who knows what they, what they think. But, um, yeah, we ended up kind of like connecting and, um, I'll just tell you this whole story and I've mentioned it to, I think a couple people, but, um, I'll try to keep you guys stable. We ended up dancing, like, you know, like slowing down. We were dancing like apart and it was, it was fun. Like she had no problem like dancing behind me. And I kind of like just mixing up the gender thing. Like, Oh, like I'll be kind of like a guy and you, you could be kind of like a guy at some point. I don't have to be like just doing a manly dance or anything. Um, in all shapes and forms, you know, like my personality, my relationship, not just dance. I like that openness of, um, yeah, not being constrained to 
my gender her perceived gender and she was cool with that and I, I told her like while it was happening I was like oh it's really cool that you can dance behind me uh uh no girls in high school would have never done that you know and uh she just thought that I don't know she like laughed or something um I'll make this drawn out story a little shorter hopefully um I, I guess I tend to attract like these like bit older women who are going through a uh, marriage uh, like crises crises because it's happened to me like three times D don't even know it but I'm like that go-to guy <laughs> you know and I don't see it as being like a negative thing it's just kind of like the way the cookie crumbles but um you know, when we were dancing, we ended up, like, kissing. And I, I just knew it's the same thing. It's like, you're not saying anything. You just, I'm, like, I'm like behind her, just kind of, like, dancing. And this is where it got kind of, like, gender conforming. I just felt like I was, like, uh, destined to be, like, the behind dancer guy. Which made me actually feel, like, pretty uncomfortable, even though everyone's very open about their um sexuality there i was like oh my god people are gonna think i'm like totally like groping this girl or something and that subsided and i knew that wasn't the absolute truth and like that that wasn't like who i was and you know i'm just having fun and we're just like improvising our interaction but um yeah we ended up kissing a few times and Honestly, it went in my head. I couldn't see any other um, outcome of that situation other than sex. It was it got it was like embedded in my mind, which um, yeah, I don't know how it. I don't know because like sex is pretty open there. And that's what I think all my resistance is, is like, this place is so open, but I'm like trying to like not be like this, like, it's, it wasn't exactly like the most freeing place for me because it's like, I'm just trying to understand this stuff and understand myself and treat people with respect. Um, so kind of like once it, the idea came in my head, it just like popped and just stuck there. So I tried to like, um, very, um, passively like say, um, do you want to like go somewhere, you know, and just try to see where, where that would possibly lead. But she was like, where, well, where would you want to go? And I was like, and I felt some like hesitation. So I was like, Oh, like, we'll just like cuddle. Maybe we could just cuddle on these, like, um, uh, these, whatever they are, like little mats. Um, yeah, we did that, and uh, it wasn't as exciting as I thought. It almost was like, oh, dancing was like kind of more fun, but um, I think for her, being someone who I think she was going through a divorce, as she was kind of telling me about this stuff, um, you know, that allowed her to like think more and kind of like put things into like perspective or question you know slow down and uh consider some things so um that's probably good it's probably what she needed and uh i don't i don't usually use the word like hot mess uh but she had told me hey you know i'm a hot mess right now just so you know or something like that and i went I wasn't quite sure because I don't really, really hear that. I've heard it a few times, but I'm like, hmm, like, what really is that? What, what do you mean? You know, hot mess. And she said, oh, I don't really know. And I was like, hmm. And I thought I knew what she meant. I mean, it means kind of like you're not really thinking all that clearly. Um, you're acting hot, spontaneous, but um, you're kind of like maybe a mess 
interior in internally. Um, you know, and it probably was not in the same category as my hot messiness, which that stuff always needs clarifying. Right. But, uh, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a hot mess too. So yeah, I don't think that was the right thing to say, but she thought it was kind of cool. I think, you know, she just like went with it. Anyway, that was, that was a weird night. Um, and we, I, I ran into her like one other time, um, the next day. And, uh, it was a little like a little bit awkward, you know. We just said hi, like I gave her a hug, and but she was like, "Oh, like I got to go do this, go like put some things away. Like I'll see you later." Um, yeah, for some reason, you know, it just wasn't like going past that that night. Um, and I remember actually when I woke up, um, so we, you know we separated after just. Um, kind of holding each other and maybe falling asleep a few times on these cushy pads, cuddle area. But when I woke up, I remember having this feeling, feeling so just unsatisfied, you know, from that interaction. And it's still in my head when I wake up, you know, not unsatisfied. Like I didn't get, uh, like a sexual release. No, I think that would have made it worse. Cause, um, from all that like physicalness that like we experienced, like dancing together, kissing, um, yeah, I felt like that wasn't, I didn't emotionally connect with this person and it, it almost kind of makes your soul like just kind of come apart, you know? It, it's like, um, I don't know how that happens, but it feels like you try to like put yourself out there um, and you want to be like lovely. You want to be like met with love, but you know, the only thing that you know how to do is to make it a physical part of love. So, um, ugh. So yeah, that was like lacking in my experience. You know, even though I was glad like that we talked, she wanted to tell me about the five kids she had and uh, and uh, yeah, just some other things about her life. I guess I didn't take notes, but uh, she kept it brief and. Um, that's just the thing. It's like, oh, just a question that comes up is like, how, how can, uh, how can I get that full spectrum of like love or, um, like satisfaction, you know, and, uh, it probably comes before, um, going towards the physical and yeah, I've really been realizing that as I've been taking a huge break from uh, girls and uh, and spending a lot of like my own time by myself and uh, yeah I mean it's at a good point for me right now to be looking at this stuff and I've, I've thought you know uh, it's really, it's really healing me that there is no reason to be in a relationship. Um, and I've even thought like, Oh, like this one girl, maybe. And that's what this one girl in my, my Spanish class, um, she's very attractive. Um, but then I, I kind of think about like the quality of what, of who she is, like for our relationship, interacting with her just in class, you know, and, um, I just know that that's not like a, a soul satisfying experience and the way I want to engage in it isn't 
also isn't satisfying um, for my heart, you know? It's, it'd just be like a mind thing of like, check, like, cute Asian girl um, for 2018, you know? It's just some dumb... Uh, Well, yeah, it's 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 dumb. It's just this little like checklist that I myself operate that we all sort of operate with these um, goals that aren't really um, in our best interest. It's just like what we think we should do. It's not actually what feels good. It's not the direction we even want our life to go in. But yeah, it's something to work through. It's almost like something that that haunts us can almost see it as like you got like the devil playing with your with your angel you know um like you know it's not good for you but you're um but your mind like thinks it's good even though it's like really familiar um and you've gone through that before you know so it can almost be i think it, it sounds the same as like an alcohol thing or um any kind of thing that we're like, you could be addicted to. Uh, yeah, it's it's like a form of addiction. Like it's just those old ways that say like, that will be satisfying, and that's what you know, what we think you know, will be most pleasurable for you. But then, if you have any sort of like new sense of it. You can come in and say, oh, my recent understanding is that is actually not going to bring me what I want. So, um, yeah, I'm actually been really glad to, that I can, I can kind of appreciate that, that I can take that um, step backwards and say, you know, I've got bigger things to do. I've got more important things to do. I want a life of meaning. Um, yeah. I want a, a life that's breeding fulfillment and inspiration like into me um, and through others, you know? And sometimes if you're trying to, well, maybe most times you're trying to take that yourself and just go with like what, what your little thought is and not what actually the feeling is, which would be including both parties. That's more of like what a real feeling is. is it actually will encapsulate both parties involved. It won't be any of that like, Oh, I wish I could show you this scene from, uh, uh, what's this movie I just watched? Like Barton or something with Tom Hardy. Oh, I thought I had it right here. Oh, Bronson. He tells, he tells this girl he just met, like, I think they've probably only been together for a few weeks. Uh, and he's been in prison for a while. He, he's not much of a lovely guy. He's um, he's a half maniac. He's, he's just, you know, had a messed up childhood. Not that it was his parents' fault, but he's, and he's, just whack, he's a wacko guy. But he's trying to, like, you know, convince this girl that he loves her. And, uh, oh, I'm getting off track. But, um... But bring it back, bringing it back is that, um, you know, I think he was only thinking about what, what he wanted and that like goal of just like, I want a stable girlfriend. I, I want, I want this, you know, not based on like the experience and like understanding the actual feeling of it and what it feels like to be with that person. And maybe there's still... I could still get more specific. I mean, you could still feel a certain way and know how you feel about somebody. But maybe I'm talking about like feeling into the other person and then knowing like their response 
to you. So yeah, I think you could just, you could get into your own feelings and just like kind of, but it's like shutting yourself off and just being like, oh, this makes me feel good. Or like, I like being in this room with people. Maybe it's like completely dark. And, uh, but you know, like maybe this room is a room you feel good in. And then you tell the whole room, like, I love this room and I want all of you people to stay. Um, I think this is a good point. And, uh, but then, you know, this hasn't given anybody the, um, the opportunity to say, you know, no, or, well, I don't, I don't agree. I don't, this isn't a mutual feeling. Like we're, I got to go for one, you know? Um, so it's about like opening your eyes and, and feeling into your environment, this person that you're around that you're saying, um, like, I love you or I, um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what else I would say about that, but I think I think you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> yeah, and that's that would that's just such a difference from that kind of like pick up sort of behavior. Like, oh, I'll just pick this person up, or this will just be this real casual thing. It's like, and I think the feelings get hurt um, for this reason. For the reason of people um, tuning tuning out the world and just listen, and just going with their mind chatter and like these little check boxes that think will make them happy, you know. So I would say I would go as far to say as once you start feeling in and the sound is kind of. Um, I don't mean feeling in like you got to touch somebody feeling in energetically or just it's like listening to the response and reaction of people in accordance to your own feelings. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a natural thing. This is not like rocket science, but there's just a big difference between if you're going to be playing like this ego game in this, uh, like I know best and I need this and like you're just blind to like what the world actually is if you if you can't connect the dots. That's all I'm saying. It took me forever to say that. And this music <laughs> doesn't make it all that simple. Um yeah, that's that's kind of what's been going on for me. Um, I would like to talk more about uh, like kind of more of my like my goals, possibly, and how I'd like to be improving um, these situations, even um, in relation to dance and uh, people. It's so funny how so many things are related, you know, at least for me, they are, you know, if I'm working on this class or if I'm really focusing on this job, certain aspects of this job, um, I feel like it just keeps crossing over into so many aspects of it, other things that I do. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I wish I had more material. It was just like more accessible for me to for it, me to get into. Um, oh, funny how I say that. There's this list which might serve as a source of inspiration. Um, I think it's pretty neat. This is Don Miguel Ruiz. Ruses, ruses. Um, 
four agreements, which the agreements are up here on the board. And this was given to me by my teacher um, in my human development class. Let's see. It says, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Okay, I'll go through these a little more quickly. Um, second one is don't take anything personally. Third, don't manage assumptions. They have great descriptions though too. Um, probably shouldn't be skipping the descriptions. But, um, four, always do your best. That sounds kind of childish, but what do they have to say about that? Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to ill. Under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. That sounds nice, right? I find that it's so important to have intentions like this. Um, yeah, I always say that, actually. I mean, sometimes my intentions change, but at least to have some intentions for me is really important. Because um, I'm more on the sensitive side and like adaptable and I can like sort of take on um, different thoughts and feelings from others. So if I don't have a plan of, I won't say attack, but a plan to sort of uh, keep keep my mind balanced when I'm encountering new situations or and especially for um, tricky, um, challenging circumstances. Um, if I don't have that, it's, uh, it's pretty rough, you know, then I'm just like finding myself like in really weird feeling scenarios and I don't know how to react. Uh, I just feel like crap and what else? Yeah. I was like, I want to be of help, you know? And sometimes you just like stay too long or you do, there's maybe you can't think of any method for like, uh, circumventing, navigating, um, challenging people or, um, you know, or your own circumstance, which was like, Oh, my car bike broke down. Um, I mean, that might seem a little bit different. But it's similar, you know, when you're like start going negative. I mean, you got to be able to um, do something with that as well and be constructive or uh, kind of recover from that or see it as something that will. This is what helps me a lot. See it as something that's going to be lifting you up, that you'll actually be learning from this situation, that you'll be better off from the situation that life actually brings you everything that you need. Yeah. Um, and I, I know there's like pessimistic people or just like negative people out there that don't believe some of that, but, um, I'm, I'm pretty certain. I mean, I've, I've been in weird situations and even though I do have like a lot of privilege in my life um that stuff works you know I've just thrown myself out into traveling around um without a lot of um like resources or uh fallbacks and yeah when in doubt just like I think it helps keep believing that life has like its plan for you. So that means if you're given um, something, 
anything you're given. I mean, usually it's just, I think, our judgments about and are perceiving that as a negative thing that hinder us so much rather than like the actual thing itself. It's not about like what we get. I don't think maybe that's what I'm getting at. Um, it's more just like how we treat things, you know, uh, a circumstance I can think of, you know, relating like these workshops and contact improv, you start dancing or you're partnered with somebody who, um, you know, first glance, first few moments, you think, um, oh, why this person? Or what a peculiar person. Why this person? Um, but then, like I'm telling you, the response for that is that everything's here to help us. So it's this person because it's this person, you know? And I, I don't know if that, that really hits home for anybody, but um, what, what makes things good is, is your um, willingness to like drop the story and and just play along with it instead of, you know, having the idea for how you think your life should be laid out and the way you want life to go. Um, yeah, I think the smoothness and even like the miraculous part about life is, um, has a lot to do with, um, Accepting that, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that, but and I'm, I'm trying to think if it's almost like accepting yourself too. Yeah, it might have something to do with that. And I mean, by no means do you need to accept people for um, crappy um, behavior and like a, like abusive behavior or anything like that, you know. Um, you'd be surprised like how much shit I can put up with. Um, you know, just but not abusive. I mean, this is that's kind of a different category with like abusive. Um, it is, you know, you, you know, when, um, when it's no longer, um, going to be productive for you or for the other person, um, or that they're drawing you m much too far from, from wh where you can, where you can feel comfortable. And maybe other people like have a even higher tolerance and they can like bounce back or they can, they can do more with these situations. Um, anyway, of course. So, so that's always there. That's not just to say like, you can do anything and, um, just roll with all the punches. But, um, I tell you what, just having this mindset will weed out a huge portion of unpleasant interactions. Cause you really are, what happens is I think you are aligning yourself towards those other positive, willing people. Um, that's just the way things go, you know? Um, somehow that's just the way it happens. Like, I almost, I don't want to do this, but it's almost like you, you change who you are. It's like you become something different. And if you become, you choose to become a rabbit, you will be with other rabbits. Um, but that's, that's the truth. Like it changes so much. Your mindset affects things so much. Um, so that, that, that will, do, that will do a lot um, to start putting you in a, a path that will um, 
be in alignment to what, what you want to bring out in the world. So uh, I think there are a lot of benefits to that. And I guess I took that from... Where did I take that from? I thought I took it from part of this list. Oh, like always doing your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to ill. I think it was in the don't manage assumptions, though. Anyway, the fifth one is um, be skeptical and learn to listen. Don't believe yourself or anybody else. That's kind of interesting, right? Use the power of doubt to question everything you hear. Is it really the truth? I like that. Listen, because nobody would even think to like question themselves or like, you know. Don't to not don't believe yourself. Like that, that's fucking interesting. Just more like the way that's phrased. I mean, like question your thought. Maybe you've heard that, but like, don't believe yourself. That's like more powerful. Okay. Um. Use the power of doubt to question everything you hear. Is it really the truth? Listen to the intent behind the words. And you will understand the real message. That's cool. I think I do that sometimes, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that can be really helpful. Hmm. Well... I wish I had more things going on. I really wish I was like ready to jump to the next spot. I really got to pee. Truth. Do I believe it? Yeah. Well, what? <laughs> no, I think I think I could pee. I could I could do it. So, um, with that note, I need to get back on my midterm. And so that, well, I don't know. I feel like this isn't even a video for anybody else. It's just my own thing. Could be a record if there's like an apocalypse. And I don't know. People or myself just need some like entertainment oh god hopefully wouldn't come to that or inspiration more i feel like that's more like my strong point i think it'd be great to be an entertainer like oh my gosh if you watch bronson that's entertaining it's pretty entertaining oh yeah and i actually did want to talk about my obsession Ugh, i wish kind of wish i didn't have it obsession with tom hardy Yeah, I don't know how that happened. It happened slowly. Is what is what happened, and then and then I just realized like how much I want to keep seeing him, um, and knowing more about him. Sort of. Uh, I don't know. It started with. I think it started with Bane actually, and uh, with Batman. I was like that voice was killer. Like that's all I remember from Batman was how cool that voice was. Honest to God. And like this kid crawling out of a cave or a well crawling out of a well that's like all i remember um but then he just keeps popping up he's gotten so much more popular um i loved him in um mad max beyond uh road, road of fury um again you could pay attention to his voice it's like he could just be a voice actor and just kill it that way um, but like on a deeper level, I, it's like the, 
the energy he like and like it's like the weight he puts into his words too you know i've only seen batman like once and i might watch it again soon but like in mad max um there's actually a unique story where he named his dog i think max um and he had gotten the dog as a puppy while he was watching um the mel gibson film uh i forget which mad max uh mad max it was but the dog was named after the movie so he liked the movie a lot and uh I'm probably missing this link in the story. The dog died recently, right before he got the part for um, Mad Max, uh, Road of, of Fury. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like ironic that, you know, his... Not really ironic. It's, it's It just kind of confirms like his pull and drive into that movie was strong. His dog was named that. He probably had a few thoughts of Mad Max, extra thoughts of Mad Max up here rather than like your average Joe, also a common name. You know, so he ended up on, on Mad Max as like the star, but yeah, pretty kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so I think him as an actor and just like how, um, how just like strong he is in his roles. It's, a, it's almost, it's given me a different, um, he has given me a different um, look or outlook on um, what it is to like act, I think. Um, and he plays like, he, I think he does play a lot of similar roles, you know, and that's, that's well known and, and a lot of actors do that. You know, he plays like a villain which I hadn't really noticed in, but you know, he's coming out with venom and, uh, what really got me sucked in was the taboo series. He plays, he plays that same kind of character. So he's like the man of, he's like the man of men really in a lot of his roles. Right. Um, but like in a controlled way too. It's not like, and I think I, this is why it appeals to me now is like, I've never seen him like take advantage of women in his roles. So that never, and he's, I've actually never seen him like engage with women in any film he's been in. And even the show taboo. And he wrote that. Um, he wrote it with his dad, I think. You know, women kind of um, come at him and, you know, it's, they, it's like these brothel chicks, like that's kind of like their job. So it's not exactly like um, trying to make him look like, like this, oh, like irresistible guy, um, which I think it kind of is um, in his, uh, it's his, de it's his demeanor and the way uh I don't know, but, um, I think it'll last with me for a while, but it is weird to think that, um, as my <clears throat> fascination has picked up for Tom Hardy, like Venom is, is out like as we speak and everyone else's, uh, fascination is at, at the heights for Tom, but, uh, a really cool movie. Um, I mean, there's probably better films. I've seen some really great films in my women in cinema class. Um, like Gilda, that was a really great film. It's a film noir that has a, a femme fatale in it. Uh, oh, I could talk all about that one, but, um, this one, it's called Locke. And again, he is a little bit similar in his role as like, um, you know, he's a straight white male. He's British and his uh, British accent comes out a little bit more in this one. 
And the interesting part about it is he's just in a car the whole the whole time, which re- kind of reminds me of um, Phone Booth, which wasn't that really a bad movie if I if I think back on that. Um, but ac- more so in this movie, it is stationed in the car. You only see possibly two, maybe like two or three minutes of things outside of the car. Uh, So it's all up to him to just like draw you in and to, you know, make a story, make the story like appealing and like it, it has like this. You know that it all connects it has like this forward momentum into how he's feeling you know and it wouldn't be very wouldn't be very interesting right if um if nothing was happening during that movie but during his car ride like a lot of people right they commute for a few hours like he was doing maybe not that much happens a few phone calls maybe listen to music sing uh oh, big deal but it wasn't just a normal trip for him his uh jobs on the line I don't want to like give anything away. His job's on the line. His marriage is on the line. So, you know, basically his whole life is on the line. And he's um trying to kind of remedy the way his dad treated him. And he doesn't want to be like his dad. And that kind of fuels his, uh, his trip in the car, actually. So, um... Anyway, yeah, it's, I thought of it last night right before falling asleep was um, something about, I was actually just listening to some uh, statements from, from Tom Hardy and uh, the writer that he works with, uh, oh, worked with on that, that film vlog or uh, director, I guess. Um, and you know he was talking about some of his like acting and and sort of like how he's like brought some elements of himself out or like you know kind of created the character um which actually it doesn't seem that hard and sometimes it just it seems so much like he's just like himself or something you know um But the point is, like, he, uh, how can I say it? Yeah, it's something I, I took away right before I fell asleep. It was like that you have to, you have to be in your own domain. You can't let, and that's very much what he is able to do in his roles, which I have really been noticing and how different kind of how different that is than myself i wish i could bring that out more um which might be sort of impossible okay um let's change the music but i want to keep working on it And, um, hmm. Let's see if it starts working soon. Seems we have frozen. Okay. Yeah. To, um, to start acting more like how I, how I want to act, how the, how the way I want to feel, you know? And I was telling that before, it's like, so I tend to change and when I'm around different people, different energies, different circumstances, sometimes I I like lose who I want to become. And I, I think that'd be so nice to be able to be like firm in like who I want to be. Um, And not really... I mean, as I tend to watch films, I try to like take on those actors. Like sometimes I just find myself coming out of a movie theater, especially movie theaters, but even like in my own home home, after I watch a a movie, I was kind of affected by, or 
or it wasn't affected by even if I just watched it. Like I, I like freaking like walk around and I might even like sound like that person a little bit. Um, and I even feel like I think like them. I like, I feel like I am them. So that's where I'm at. And it's a little bit different than Tom Hardy, I believe, because he's able to be so firm in like who he is. Like I really think about like taboo and I was thinking about it in the last few episodes. Now all those actors really, how, how I was thinking like, how are they able to do that? And you know, they're having like somebody come at them with like so much, like they're really like in their own role. They're like, they're their own person. What do they do with that? Like, how do you play that character that's, you know, supposed to be in that particular relationship with the other and still be like really like, like kind of centered and like firm and yourself inside of that role. And yeah, I think it's just that like, you know, people are just like, like kind of reaching down into like that, that person who they could be. Um, if this, if these were the circumstances, hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of it. Oh, this has gone on a long time. One, one, one. Almost twelve. All right, all done. I am gonna finish things here. Have a lovely time with yourselves. And thanks for listening. If anybody listened to my spiels, my rants, uh, I appreciate it. And I'll probably have more coming out because this is fun. All right. Laters.